Okay, one of the single most commonly asked questions I get is, hey Dave, I would like to break into data analytics. I would like to be a data analyst, I'd like to be a data scientist, something like that, but I don't necessarily have a technical background. So my response to this is usually always the same, which is do some market research. The subject of this video is an example of that kind of market research. Specifically, what I'm going to do is analyze for you 25 data scientist jobs at Facebook and show you what are the common skills that they have and then show you how you can use that data to then stack rank the skills and begin planning your own journey from going from wherever you're at to having the collection of skills that would probably make you a viable candidate for a data scientist job at Facebook. So let's go ahead and take a look at a real life data scientist job description at Facebook. So here I am in a real life job description for a data scientist comma analytics role at Facebook. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this aspect of the job description, because from what I saw across a number of Facebook job descriptions, this is basically repeated. And one of the things I do need to emphasize is that soft skills matter. When I flip over to Excel and show you the results of the analysis that I conducted across 25 data scientist job descriptions, I'm going to be focusing on the hard skills. However, you got to have soft skills. Okay. And let me show you what I mean by that when we look through this. So first up, and I think this is really super important, is this part is real interesting. The very first bullet point, apply your expertise in quantitative analysis. So that, that basically tells me things like basic statistics, linear regression, maybe logistic regression, things like that. Data mining. Now, if you're not familiar with data mining, this is a relatively old school term. And for me, data mining really boils down to four key things. And by the way, I'm planning on doing a YouTube series, an introductory series on data mining about the things I'm just about ready to mention because I think it'll be pretty useful for folks. So first up would be machine learning. Absolutely machine learning goes under that data mining umbrella. So for example, something like the Mighty Random Forest to mine your data in a classification problem and to find out what's going on. What are the highly predictive features? So machine learning, definitely. Cluster analysis, also a very common data mining technique. Market basket analysis, also very commonly used data mining technique and wildly useful. And lastly, process mining, which is not as big of a deal in the United States as it probably should be, but also a very, very useful data mining technique. And now here's where the communication skills come in. Presentation of data to see beyond the numbers and understand how users interact with both our consumer and business products, okay? So that's, can you do the analyses, right? Can you do the quantitative analysis? Can you mine the data? Can you get insights? And then can you communicate them? So even though I'm gonna be focusing in the Excel spreadsheet on hard skills, make no mistake, you need to have soft skills. You need to be able to communicate. So I'll skip over these. You can read them at your leisure product operations. Okay, so this I found interesting because basically finding someone that's an expert in all of these things simultaneously is going to be quite rare. So as we'll see later when we look at the actual qualifications, this kind of thing leads me to believe that there are different flavors of data scientists, comma, analytics at Facebook. And most of the stuff that you see is mostly around doing data analyses. And there'll be some data engineering kind of thing that we'll see in a second. So first up, product operations, forecasting and setting product goals, designing and evaluating experiments. Okay, and this one I found interesting, monitoring key product metrics, understanding root causes of changes in metrics, building and analyzing dashboards and reports, building key data sets to empower operational exploratory analysis, and evaluating and defining metrics. So there's a lot around KPI analysis here. And if you're interested, I actually have a YouTube video, it'll be up here on the card, on KPI analysis and how you can actually do this stuff rigorously using a technique from statistical process control, which is, by the way, super easy, accessible to anybody, even with just basic Excel skills, okay? So that's one aspect. So we have exploratory data analysis, which is 
Not surprising, right? If you're working with data, you need to be able to explore data. Exploratory data analysis is kind of a fundamental skill of anybody that works with data. Not surprisingly, I have a YouTube tutorial series on exploratory data analysis with Excel. You can click up here. Don't do it yet. Later on, if you want, if you're interested, you can click and take a look at that series, and it teaches you how to do exploratory data analysis with Excel. And then, of course, once you learn it in Excel, you can translate that to other technologies, Tableau, R programming, whatever it might be. Okay, so you got exploratory data analysis. Um, I like how they mentioned building models here, because when I think of that in the context of, once again, data mining, which most definitely has modeling in it, because you can think of machine learning, obviously as a modeling technique, um, clustering, this is kind of a modeling technique if you want to think of it that way. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch. And then lastly, definitely um, market basket analysis creates association rule models for things. So when I see this, I'm like, okay, data mining, modeling, definitely part of the job description here. Definitely, if nothing else, if you have those skills, you're going to raise your candidacy for a job like this. Let's put it that way. Okay. So product leadership, influencing product teams through presentations of data-based recommendations. Once again, communication skills and communicating is right there. So don't ignore communication skills. They're extremely important. And then lastly, we've got data infrastructure. This is where things get a little bit interesting um, because it kind of takes on this data engineering flavor. But as we'll see later on in the qualifications, it doesn't really seem to jive super well. But anyway, I'm going to make an assumption, by the way, as I said earlier, that you are interested in getting into data analytics, data science in one of these kinds of roles, but you don't necessarily have a technical background. So I might explain things that folks that have a technical background might be like, geez, Dave, why are you taking time to explain this? It's because I'm going for a specific audience. And if you know more, don't worry about it. Just ignore these things. So first up. Hadoop is a big data storage technology, if you're not familiar, but what's actually more interesting for people interested in getting in data analytics, and in particular, becoming a data scientist at Facebook, is Hive. So Hive is a technology that was built originally by Facebook, and it runs on top of Hadoop, and it allows you to query, massage, and analyze data at scale. Now, why that's important is because how you work with Hive is you use a programming language that is very, very similar to this thing right here, SQL, SQL, Structured Query Language. So if you got SQL skills, it helps you out working with Hive, which is Facebook's chosen big data storage and analysis technology. Now notice here, it also says sometimes you're gonna be using MySQL, which is a database, Oracle, which is a relational database, and Vertica, which is another type of database. All of these use SQL. SQL's even in the name of one of them. So that tells you something. That's gonna be a big, big hint from a skills perspective. If you don't know SQL, you should probably learn it. And by the way, I do have a tutorial series that teaches folks with just Excel skills, SQL skills, no, no, no assumption about your programming background whatsoever. If you can do basic analyses in Excel using tables and VLOOKUPs and things like that, then this tutorial series up here will teach you how to do SQL. And then this is the part that I thought was interesting. This is very kind of data engineering kind of, where they say, hey, can you automate analyses and authoring pipelines via SQL, which would also, of course, help you with this Hive thing, and Python-based ETL framework. Now, does that mean that you have to actually write Python and use the ETL framework? Or the ETL framework is built in Python and it's a little bit easier because maybe it's got like some sort of higher level abstraction on top of it. That part I don't know. This, this last part I found very interesting because most of the job descriptions, when I looked at their qualifications, they really didn't talk about building data pipelines in Python. So I didn't, that's interesting. All I would say is this, based on all my experience, applying for jobs and being a hiring manager is, if you've got like all of this stuff, but you don't have this part, you're probably a pretty good candidate. That's what I would think. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down to the minimum qualifications. Okay, this is where the rubber kind of meets the road. So you can see here um, the educational requirements and then performing quantitative analysis. Okay, 
That's pretty generic, but I usually interpret that as being basic statistics. Can you do hypothesis testing? And can you do linear regression? Maybe logistic regression as well. That would be definitely that. Also, the KPI analysis that they talked about above, I would also say goes into this bucket as well. And as I mentioned, there is a KPI analysis video I have on my channel. You can get it up there. You need data querying language, languages. Not surprisingly, you need SQL. They say, for example, SQL, not quite sure what else there is really, but okay, cool. Scripting languages, e.g. Python. There are other types of scripting languages, but they specifically mentioned Python, for example or statistical slash mathematical software. This one is interesting because notice they mention R, SAS, and MATLAB. Now, based on this particular line, and then all of this stuff above, if, you can, if you've got SQL skills, awesome. That's obviously gonna be a bare requirement. If you didn't have Python, that would probably be okay. If you had one of these, definitely. Or if you had Python, great. But mainly what I would be focusing on, can you use either Python or one of these languages to do the KPI analysis, to do the quantitative analysis, to do the data mining? I think that would be a higher priority than building and maintaining ETL pipelines. Just based on the sheer amount of verbiage in this job description, that's related to things focused on data analysis, crafting insights. Okay, so that's the job description analysis, right? So what I did was I did this over and over again for a total of 25 job descriptions. And then what I did was I tallied up all of the hard skills and put them in an Excel spreadsheet so that you can see how often these skills are listed in various job descriptions. And the more often they're listed, obviously the more important they are. So it's probably something you should learn first. Oh, before I flip over to Excel, I should mention applied statistics or experimentation like A-B testing in an industry setting. So applied statistics obviously be A-B testing, linear regression, logistic regression, KPI analysis, by the way, I would, I would definitely lump into this as well. And then of course, once again, can you communicate? And then the preferred qualifications are pretty general. Do you have experience working in a consumer technology company? Okay, however, if you didn't have this, in, but you had a whole bunch of the other stuff, you'd still probably be a pretty good candidate. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and flip over to Excel and see the sum total of the hard skills. Here we are in Excel. And what you can see here is I've found a bunch of different data scientist positions. Now, the first thing that you should notice here is that at the time of this recording, there seems to be two primary groupings. They are these data scientists, comma, analytics roles. And then there's more of a hard data scientist, for lack of a better way of describing it. What I've been told by several people that work at Facebook is, is that delineation is a good way to think about it, that these are more hard. These are definitely more intensive with machine learning skills and with computer science skills and more in-depth statistical skills. And these are more akin to technical data analyst roles, like maybe at Amazon or someplace like that. So these are actually very good roles for people wanting to break into the field because these typically have much higher technical requirements and much higher bar of entry than these types of jobs. But you'll see here that um, Facebook does a really nice thing where they'll have a job description and then they'll tell you, hey, this is one of four jobs in Bellevue, Washington, or you know, this is one of two jobs in London, England, or something like that. So that's where these numbers come from. Okay, this is really cool, okay? So I've got 25 of these job descriptions here, 14 of which were this data scientist, comma, analytics, and then all up. And then what you can see here is I created a general bucket for data analysis skills. So that's what they use the term quantitative analysis or data analysis or data mining or something like that. I just lumped it all together in this bucket. And what you can see here is that fully 100% of all of the job descriptions required this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll down a little bit because we don't actually need to see the numbers. We can just see the results. That's what's really important. So data analysis skills. Okay, not surprisingly, oops, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and scroll back down here. All the jobs require data analysis skills, not a shocker. 
All the jobs require SQL skills. Also not a shocker. Now notice this, I found this particularly interesting. So this essentially says Python or R, Python or R. And what you can see here is that all the jobs mention Python. And as you saw in the previous description, they're usually like, for example, do you have a scripting language like Python? Not necessarily you have to know Python. And then R was listed sometimes, as we saw, as a mathematical statistical programming language along with SAS and MATLAB. And in some of the job descriptions, it was listed specifically with Python as a scripting language option. So what this tells me is that basically you can pick one, right? You can pick one. Python might have a certain advantage because of the ETL thing that we saw earlier. But in general, once again, looking at all these job descriptions, if you can do the data mining and the quantitative analysis and the KPI analysis with R, you're going to be a good candidate from everything I can see. And there were a couple, there were a very small number of jobs that actually said you needed to know both Python and R, by the way. So, okay, there you go. Now, A-B testing was very commonly listed because not surprisingly, a lot of what you're going to be doing in these roles is trying to improve Facebook Messenger or Facebook ads or some aspect of the Facebook platform or Instagram or whatever it might be, in which usually uses an A-B test for that. So all up about one out of five jobs required experience with A-B testing, but only 14.3% of these data scientists come analytics jobs required A-B testing. Uh, desired experience with designing experiments, which of course is related to the A-B testing, and you can see why these numbers are exactly the same because they are 100% linked together. And then you can see here that design uh, desired uh, Desired experience with experiments was only 16% all up. Now, Hive, Spark, Hadoop, these are all big data platforms. Hive is obviously the default, as I mentioned earlier, at Facebook, and you can see here very high percentages. And lastly, you can see here that there that a certain number of jobs, more than one out of four here for the data scientist, comma analytics, mentioned machine learning specifically as a desired skill which I found interesting because they mentioned data mining as kind of a universal skill and model building as kind of a universal skill. So what this tells me is that generally speaking, you can't go wrong picking up some machine learning, okay? And you don't have to pick, pick it doesn't need to be deep neural networks, it doesn't need to be AI. When you're talking about data mining, things like boosted decision trees, decision trees, random forest would be completely in line with the terminology that they're using. So all that to say, here you go. You gotta learn data analysis. You gotta learn SQL. Oh, and by the way, in data analysis, KPI analysis, that was specifically listed. You need to pick up a programming language like either Python or R to learn how to conduct these analyses because typically you can't do them in Excel. And then lastly, some machine learning is probably good along with some other data mining types of things like clustering, that sort of thing. If you're interested, I actually offer a program that teaches folks with only basic Excel skills, our programming, and then from there, teaches you machine learning. Once again, you, the video is gonna be up here and I, <laughs> I know this sounds like a commercial for my content, but it just so happens that the things that I focus on, Excel, SQL, and R, tend to be broadly applicable. And this is just one example of that. So the kinds of things that I teach, apply to data scientists, comma, analytics positions at Facebook. The next video in this series is going to be a bit of a departure. It's going to be focused on an example data analytics portfolio project. And when that video is up and ready, it's going to be either here or here, and you can just click on it and go take a look at it. What, what it's going to cover essentially is this. If you want to break into analytics as a data analyst or a data scientist, it, it's good to have a project portfolio, especially if you have no formal education or work background. What's more important, quite frankly, than the topic of your portfolio project is how your portfolio project is executed. And what the video will cover is the characteristics that you would like to see in your, or you would like to put into your portfolio project to make sure that a hiring manager is ultimately impressed with what you've done. So that'll be the next video in this series. 
And then of course, later on, we'll be covering more types of data analytics job descriptions like data science positions from Microsoft, some business analyst positions from Facebook, things like that. Okay, until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.